Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. In Afghanistan, U.S. forces have launched what's being described as the largest Marine offensive since the Vietnam War. Some 4,000 Marines and hundreds of Afghan troops are targeting areas in the Helmand River Valley to wrest it from Taliban control. The Pentagon, meanwhile, has announced a U.S. soldier has been captured in eastern Afghanistan. Military officials say the soldier was not taking part in the Helmand offensive. The news comes as Admiral Mike Mullen, chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has said the Obama administration has placed no limits on the potential number of U.S. troops in Afghanistan. In an interview with the Washington Post, Mullen said the new U.S. commander in Afghanistan, General Stanley McChrystal, has been told to request as many troops as he thinks he needs. Senate Democrats have unveiled a revised health care plan costing $600 billion, down from the $1 trillion price tag given earlier this year. The proposal from Senators Edward Kennedy and Christopher Dodd includes a government-run insurance option and a fee on employers who don't cover their workers. The Congressional Budget Office estimates the plan would lead to health coverage for 97 percent of Americans, but it's unclear how robust that coverage would be. The proposal was released as President Obama held a health care forum in Annandale, Virginia, before a hand-picked audience asking questions pre-approved by the White House. An emotional moment came when Virginia resident Debbie Smith described her inability to receive treatment for a recently diagnosed tumor. Obama hugged Smith after she spoke. I cannot get Medicaid through the state of Virginia because you have to be qualified. You have to be considered disabled through Social Security to qualify for um, Medicaid in the state of Virginia because I have no dependent children at home. It's just me. I get food stamps, but that's it. And I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to make it nine years till I'm qualified to get my regular Social Security. Now that I have a new tumor and have no way to treat it. Well, Fred, here, come on over here. The, uh, first of all, um, we're, we're going to find out what, uh, we'll get your information and we'll see what we can do to help you. I'm, I'm, I don't want you to feel all like you're alone on this. The, uh, it's, uh, you know, without knowing all the details, I'm not going to give you an answer right now about exactly how we can help. We're going to find out uh, what we can do with an existing law. But uh, what was your name again? Uh, my name is Debbie. I'm from Debbie. Virginia. Uh, Debbie is a perfect example of... Uh, somebody who we should, in a country this wealthy, be able to provide coverage uh, for, She's uh, for her health care problems. The questioner, Debbie Smith, later told reporters she still hopes to get an answer to how she can obtain treatment instead of waiting nine years for her government eligibility to kick in. As Democrats advance a proposal for some form of public health care, former Democrat-turned-independent Senator Joseph Lieberman has announced he's likely to oppose it. In an interview with the New Haven Independent, Lieberman said he's, quote, skeptical of a public health option, both in substance and in its likelihood to attract congressional support. Lieberman has been a top recipient of health care industry donations, taking in more than $1.8 million over his congressional career. The Pentagon suspended military cooperation with Honduras in response to the overthrow of the democratically elected President Manuel Zelaya. It's the first major punitive action taken by the United States since Zelaya was ousted last Sunday. The Obama administration has refused to legally classify Zelaya's ouster as a coup, which would automatically trigger a suspension of aid. Meanwhile, as public outcry continues throughout Honduras, an overnight curfew has been toughened to allow the 24-hour jailing of protesters without charge. We'll have more on Honduras after headlines. In Iraq, an Iraqi soldier has been killed and eight others wounded in a roadside bombing in Baghdad. It was the first attack on Iraqi troops since the U.S. military pulled back from urban Iraqi areas earlier this week. In Israel and the occupied territories, Amnesty International has accused both Israel and Hamas of committing war crimes during Israel's three-week attack on the Gaza Strip. In a new report, Amnesty says Israel carried out the wanton destruction of Gaza. Amnesty researcher Dantella Rivera rejected Israeli claims that Hamas used Gaza residents as human shields, saying the evidence points only to Israeli forces committing that crime. Israeli forces have very sophisticated very precise weapons that can take out a target moving, you know, a, a moving vehicle. So, you know, there, there is no reason to 
um, to, to carry out such indiscriminate attack. We did not find any Palestinians who said that they had personally been used as human shields by Hamas forces. We did find some who had been used in such a manner by Israeli forces, though. Hamas officials have criticized Amnesty International for suggesting parity between the Israeli attack that killed more than 1,400 Palestinians, most of them civilian, and the Palestinian response that led to 13 Israeli deaths, including three civilians. In Pakistan, a new poll shows a large majority opposes U.S. policies in their country and a neighboring Afghanistan. According to worldpublicopinion.org, nearly 82 percent of Pakistanis oppose U.S. drone attacks that have killed hundreds of people. Another 79 percent favor an immediate end to the war in Afghanistan. And 86 percent oppose Obama's decision to more than double the size of the U.S. occupation. The poll also shows a strong dislike of the Taliban, with 81 percent calling the group a critical threat to Pakistan. President Obama has announced he'll continue a Bush administration policy of suspending trade benefits to Bolivia. The Bush administration revoked the benefits last year, accusing the Bolivian president, Evo Morales, of failing to cooperate in the so-called war on drugs. On Wednesday, Morales said Obama's been deceptive in promising a new era of regional cooperation. Referring to Obama's overtures at a recent hemispheric summit, Morales said, quote, President Obama lied to Latin America when he told us in Trinidad and Tobago that there are not senior and junior partners. The U.S. has been accused of hypocrisy for targeting Bolivia. The most recent U.N. figures show cocaine production in Bolivia rose just 5 percent in 2007. Colombia, which has received billions in U.S. aid, saw an increase of 27 percent. In California, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger has declared a fiscal state of emergency over a more than $26 billion deficit. Schwarzenegger has ordered state offices to close for three days a month. The state controllers expected to begin issuing IOUs to pay off bills as early as today. Schwarzenegger has sought to reduce the deficit entirely through major cutbacks to government programs, including welfare. He's meanwhile opposed several Democratic proposals, including new taxes on oil and tobacco companies. An attorney at the Securities and Exchange Commission has revealed her superior shunned warnings about the jailed financier Bernie Madoff. Madoff was sentenced this week to 150 years in jail for running a massive Ponzi scheme that defrauded investors of some $50 billion. The attorney, Genevieve Walker Lightfoot, said she told SEC officials in 2005 about irregularities that later proved to be elements of Madoff's wide scale fraud. Walker Lightfoot said she was told to focus on other matters not concerning Madoff. One of Walker Lightfoot's supervisors was Eric Swanson, who later married Madoff's niece. The key whistleblower in the Madoff case, Harry Markopoulos, has also said the SEC ignored his warnings as far back as the year 2000. The Obama administration is being accused of relying on statements obtained through torture to justify the ongoing jailing of a prisoner at Guantanamo. On Wednesday, the American Civil Liberties Union asked a federal judge to throw out statements made by Afghan prisoner Mohammed Jawad. The ACLU says Jawad was abused, threatened, and deprived of sleep in U.S. custody. Jawad's case has received further scrutiny because it's believed he was jailed when he was 12 years old. A U.S. military panel has recommended the discharge of a 10-year veteran who publicly admitted he's gay. The soldier, U.S. Army Lieutenant Dan Choi, is a graduate of West Point Military Academy and an Arabic translator. If discharged, he would be the 266th member of the armed forces removed under President Obama for violating the Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy, which bars gays and lesbians from openly serving in the military. Obama has vowed to repeal the policy but hasn't taken any steps to do so. A federal judge has ordered a New York-based cookie factory to reinstate and pay back wages to more than 130 striking workers. The Stella Doro Biscuit Company employees walked off the job last August, two weeks before their contract was set to expire. Company officials had tried to force them to accept a $5 an hour wage reduction, along with cuts to pension and health care benefits. A newly declassified document show former Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein told FBI interrogators he let the world believe he had weapons of mass destruction to avoid appearing weak to neighboring Iran. Saddam Hussein also said he had no links to al-Qaeda and denounced Osama bin Laden as, quote, a zealot. Saddam Hussein was hanged in December 2006 for crimes carried out before he enjoyed critical U.S. support up until he invaded Kuwait. And those are some of the...